afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to attend this very special webinar on the Costa del Sol with Senior Discovery Tours, featuring guest speaker Barbara Birdi. My name is Natalia Vargas, and I have been a tour consultant and tour manager at Senior Discovery Tours for nine years. And I've had the privilege of traveling to almost 40 countries and every continent, except Antarctica, which is still on my list. Please know that everyone has been muted. There will be a question and answer period at the end of Barbara's presentation. Should you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the Q&A section at either the bottom or the top of your screen, depending on your device. Today, we have a surprise. Once again, one lucky attendee is going to win a $100 gift certificate for future travel with Senior Discovery Tours. At the end of the presentation, I will ask a question based on the webinar, and the first person to enter the correct answer in the Zoom chat will be the lucky winner. Please stay tuned for this exciting opportunity. On our agenda today, we will briefly discuss our updated health and safety regulations in relation to COVID-19 and some of our exciting new reward programs. Presenter guest speaker, Barbara Berti, who will take us on an incredible journey around Spain's Costa del Sol. There will then be a question and answer period. After the Q&A, we will outline our many tours and what makes us so unique. So for anyone who is new to Senior Discovery Tours, please stick around. We are now going to outline our health and COVID-19 protocols and our new discovery rewards. For those who attended our last webinar, this may be a repeat for you. Feel free to grab a coffee and come back in about three minutes. First, a little bit about us. Senior Discovery Tours is the largest Canadian tour operator specializing in fully escorted worldwide group tours for the mature traveler since 1975. We now offer over 200 tours and cruises, all with interesting itineraries, flexible pricing, great value and quality. The health and safety of our clients and staff are of the utmost importance, and we are delighted to report that we have been awarded the Safe Travel Stamp by the World Travel and Tourism Council. We anticipate there will be a vaccination certificate necessary for any travel to a foreign country and possibly even to board an aircraft. These regulations will be outlined by governing countries. Vaccination against COVID-19 will be required to participate in a senior discovery tours. Proof must be submitted to our offices no later than 14 days prior to departure. We have updated our policy to ensure that you are covered for COVID-19 when traveling with us. Senior Discovery Tours is excited to launch two new programs, Discovery Rewards and Blue Sky Referrals. From exclusive travel items to discounts on future tours, this is an exciting way to get more out of every trip you take. Simply put, the more you travel, the higher your rewards. Another amazing program is our Insider Club Benefits. If you're part of a club or association, we will offer a 4% commission that will be paid directly to the club or association. The best part is that there's no minimum number of participants required for this benefit. To book a virtual presentation for your club, please contact us. You can book with confidence and complete peace of mind when with our new special cancellation policy. You may now cancel your tour up to 45 days for Canadian holidays and 60 days for international travel prior to your departure date and Senior Discovery Tours will offer you an immediate full refund. Should Senior Discovery Tours be forced to cancel a tour due to government advisories, you will be issued an immediate full refund. Our international tours for 2021 and 2022 are now open for booking. To book one of these tours, please contact one of our agents. If you're not currently on our mailing list and would like to be, please subscribe on our website. Each season, we like to include new and unique exciting tour destinations. Our latest brochure features these incredible new tours. Cuba, off the beaten path, Barbados, Martinique and Guadalupe, Colonial Treasures of Mexico, Hidden, tre hidden Treasures, sorry, Hidden Gems of Mexico, Wellness Yoga Retreat in Costa Rica, Argentina, Buenos Aires and Mar del Plata, 
wonders of ancient Egypt and wonders of Thailand. Now, on with the program. We will be joined by our expert tour manager, Barbara Berti, who will take us on a virtual tour of Spain's beautiful Costa del Sol. Barbara has been a tour manager with Senior Discovery Tours for eight years. Travel has always been her passion, and she feels incredible, incredibly fortunate to have been able to visit over 80 countries. She is especially passionate about the Costa del Sol. Barbara is very knowledgeable about Spain and has hosted many tours there. In this webinar, she will show us some of the highlights of this tour and things you might expect to see and do. There will also be an opportunity to ask Barbara questions about the tour and the places we visit. Hi, Barbara. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Natalia. Thank you very much. Oh, buenos dias. Bienvenidos a la Costa del Sol. This is a basic map of the area of southern Spain where we will be staying and where some of our included and optional excursions will take place, which I will talk about in more detail. They cover a wide range of activities. And for each of the excursions, we are accompanied by a local guide. Next slide, please. This is where you are going, the beautiful Costa del Sol. It is a spectacular, kilometers and kilometers of beaches and mountains in the background. Next slide, please. Our first excursion is to Malaga, which is one of my very favorite cities in all of Spain. To fully appreciate Malaga, we actually travel up a hill in the middle of the city to the Alcazar, which is the slide on the left, and it means citadel. It was built in the 11th century when Spain was under control of the Moors and is the best preserved Alca Alcazar in Spain. There is a small military museum, but really the reason that everybody comes here is the viewpoint. You really get a great sense of the city as you can see on the slide on the right. Uh, and just to let you know, Antonio Banderas has a house that's very near here. We then descend into the city and begin our walking tour, enjoying its small streets, just checking out places you might want to go um, to when you have your days at leisure. It's a really easy bus ride from the hotel. Malaga also has a fabulous central market. And for all of those who have ever traveled with me, you know that I love markets. We then visit the magnificent cathedral, which you see the, um, the top up on the slide on the right, which is one of the best examples of Spanish religious art. Construction began in 1530 and ended in the 17th century. And in addition to seeing the high altar and the various chapels, just to let you know, there's one that's dedicated to Santa Barbara. There are two organs that have over 4,000 pipes. We return to the hotel for lunch and we come back in the afternoon to visit the Picasso Museum. I bet most of you did not know that Picasso was actually born in Malaga. So it's an absolute must to visit his birthplace museum. As you can see on the, uh, the bottom slide, there's poor Picasso sitting at a bench all by himself. So when you come out of the museum, it's wonderful to go and have your picture actually taken with the man himself. Next slide, please. Our journey to Granada takes about an hour and a half. We meet our special guide for our visit to the Alhambra, and we go back in time to when the Moors controlled Spain. This was their palace and their fortress. It was built between 1238 and 1358 on a plateau actually overlooking Granada. We wander through all the rooms and the outdoor spaces, and every one is more beautiful than the last your breath will be taken away by the quality of the craftsmanship and the gardens were actually designed to be paradise on earth. After the Christians reconquered the Alhambra, it became the royal court of Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand. I'm sure you've probably heard of them. And even Christopher Columbus had to come here to get money for his journey to the new world. After our tour of the Alhambra, the coach picks us up and then we have an amazing three course lunch in the center of the city before proceeding on our walking tour of the old city. Next slide, please. One half day excursion begins in the white village of Frigidiana. The Spanish tourism authorities have awarded it the prettiest village in Andalusia. It's hilly and if you don't wanna climb, 
There's a cafe to enjoy a coffee or a tea while you watch everybody else climb the stairs. However, to all those photographers of the group, there is, it is a photographer's paradise. As you climb the stairs around every bend is another aha moment. And you know, you think, oh, I can't take a prettier picture. Well, you can take a prettier picture because around every corner, there's a prettier picture. It's amazing. But you can see the, uh, the photograph on the left, the white whitewashed houses, and there are flower pots and, and flowers in front of every house. There's also tiles um, on some of the houses which advertise shops, they give directions, and there are bigger tiles that actually tell the history of the village. Then it is on to Mirha and the caves. Top right. They were discovered in 1959 by a group of boys who were looking for bats. Our visit is about 45 minutes long and yes, there are stairs. But I really encourage everybody to come into the caves because they are spectacular. And they have the largest stalagmite in the entire world. It's 32 meters high. Uh, the caves actually stretch for about five kilometers. No, we're not gonna walk all five kilometers. But um, there's one that's actually like an amphitheater and they hold concerts in the amphitheater. Can you imagine what the sound would be like? Our next stop is the town of Nirha and the balcony of the world. As you can see in the bottom right photograph, it is a wonderful view of the coastline. There's even time for shopping and coffee or an ice cream. Next slide, please. Another half day excursion begins in the Fungarola market, where you are on the left in the picture. I know there are lots of you that love wandering around markets and this is one of your opportunities. Um, you get to see the variety of foods that people actually eat, and there are lots of stalls that are selling clothing and shoes and all kinds of things that people actually use in their everyday lives. And it's important to remember that this is a market that is really for the local people. It's not for the tourists. But I know there are some of you that probably don't like markets, so there's always the cafe. Then we climb to the hills of the picturesque village of Mijas, which you see in the middle. And among other things, it provides an incredible view of the Costa del Sol. We do a walking tour of the narrow street and we do a tasting of the famous Malaga wines. Now, if someone doesn't wanna walk, you can take a donkey taxi like our little friend on the right. Now, I have never had anybody take one, but you know what? There's always a first time for everything. And after our tour, you have more time for shopping, a glass of wine, or just to sit down. Next slide, please. On another half day excursion, we drive to Antiquera. It's a beautiful town, which is really often bypassed by tourists. And our, our coach drops us off at the top of the hill that you can see in the top photograph. It's another Alcazar and Citadel, which overlooks the town itself. And for those of you who don't wanna climb, guess what? There's a cafe. I think there's somebody who went around and put a cafe in all the appropriate places where there are stairs. Anyway, we then, after those have climbed up, we descend into the old town and we stop at a former palace, which is now a museum. It contains a variety of art and artifacts from the Romans onward. Its most famous possession is the, the photograph that you see on the right. It is basically, <coughs> excuse me, the a Phoebe of Antiquera, and it's from the first century, and it was found by a farmer working in his field in 1955. Can you imagine you're plowing along and all of a sudden you have this amazing discovery? It's the best Roman discovery in all of Spain, and it was discovered in perfect shape. Not one part of it was broken. It's breathtaking. Next slide, please. Porta Barnus and Marbella are the towns of the rich and famous. It's part of why the Costa del Sol became what it is. On this half day excursion, our first stop is Porta Barnus, where we see the mega yachts, as you can see in the middle photograph. Um, I think you, I always say you can smell the money in Porta Barnus, and it's also a place where the rich boys come to experience, <laughs> to um, show off their expensive new toys. Um, then it's on to Marbella. We leave the coach and we walk into the new section of town to discover a magnificent series of Salvador Dali sculptures, like the one on the left. There are actually 10 of them, 
And you don't even have to go to a museum. They're like right on a pedestrian walkway. Next, we walk over to the old town, as you can see on the right, and it's whitewashed buildings and flower draped balconies and more narrow streets. And then there's time for shopping, coffee, or just meandering around before we have to head back to the coach. Next slide, please. One of our stops on this half day excursion is to visit that wonderful man in the middle holding up an orange. It's the fruit orchards of the hilarious Juanito. And he greets us in the orchards. He gives us a tasting of his oranges and his grapefruits and his lemons. He's also known for grafting together grapefruits and lemons and oranges, and et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, he wants us to taste everything. He's an amazing rock home tour. He's a great storyteller. He's been on television, he's been on the radio, and he's very funny. And nobody could leave without a smile on their face or just laughing as we get back into the coach. For the next stop, we go to a fruit and vegetable market where you, where you actually see what's produced in the area. And we visit an agricultural museum where you see the kinds of implements that people used over the last 100 years. Then we head to the beautiful village of Ohan. You can see it nestled in the mountains um, on the bottom picture. And it's another one of those beautiful white villages. And I think you probably have figured out by now that there are a number of beautiful towns and villages on this tour. En route to Ohan, we pass through the beautiful um, Sierra de la Neves National Park, which you can see on the top, left, top right, and um, stunning mountains. And some of its peaks actually reach to over 2,000 meters in height. When we get to Ohan, you basically have a choice. You can walk with the guide down into the little village and see what that is like. Remember, you have to come back up. Or you can go to a cafe and enjoy a traditional um, drink, which is called an aqua diente, which you have with coffee. And aqua diente is actually an anise liqueur. It's a specialty of Ohan, and it's very fun to share with the locals what they drink every morning with their coffee. It also was one of the economic driving forces of OHEN. Next slide, please. Now I'm gonna talk about some of the optional excursions. One possibility is Sevilla, which are the top two pictures on the left. Um, when you arrive in Sevilla, you have a coach tour of the city, which allows you to see the magnificent architecture and understand a little bit more about its history. And um, it really appears as if every street is more beautiful than the last. It's interesting to know that Sevilla is only 60 kilometers from the sea up a river. And a lot of the ships that went to the New World in search of gold and silver actually sailed from Sevilla, which is why you have so much money invested in the city. And I think you remember from your history class in high school all about the conquistadors and many of them came back here. Uh, then you begin a walking tour of the old city and the Jewish quarter before heading to the magnificent Gothic cathedral and the tomb of Christopher Columbus. And before leaving Sevilla, you enjoy a traditional Andalusian three course lunch with wine and beer. Another optional excursion is to Ronda. You make your way up the hills and you begin a walking tour. Ronda is famous for the home of bullfighting. And there is the beautiful bull ring. It's spectacular. It was built in 1785 and it can house 5,000 people. You also visit the Bullfighting Museum so you understand the whole history of bullfighting and you see the beautiful jackets that the matadors wore. And it should be noticed that Ernest Hemingway loved Ronda and every time he possibly could, he came to see the bullfight. Then you continue on to the narrow streets and a visit to the bridge. Now you can see in the photograph on the right that Rhonda is built above the gorges and the bridge connects the two sides of the town. And it's a wow moment. Now at the end of the tour, if you want, you can actually climb down to the bottom and take that actual picture from the bottom. Or you could ask one of your colleagues to do that while you go and have a tapas lunch or meander around before heading back to the coach. Next slide, please. There are two types of optional excursions for Gibraltar. If you love Marks and Spencer's and British brands, 
There is one that is focused on shopping. The other tour allows a bit of time to walk down the main street. And yes, it is called the main street. And both groups have an option if they want to, to have some fish and chips in a British pub. There are lots of pubs. Um, those doing the rock tour, meanwhile, are then loaded into a minibus and you see all the main sites of Gibraltar, including the Europa Point Lighthouse, which is the southernmost point in Europe. Also old World War, World War II military installations. But the highlight is St. Michael's Cave <clears throat> and the Barbary Marquise, that cute little animal you see on the left-hand side. Um, they're very cute, but they also do snatch shiny, shiny objects like earrings and necklaces and things like that. So everybody has to be careful. If you really want to say you have put your foot in Africa, then Tangiers is the tour for you. It's a long day, but it's exciting to walk through the Casbah and to experience a completely different culture, not to mention enjoying a wonderful traditional Moroccan lunch. Next slide, please. This optional tour takes you to Cordova. Once you leave the coach, you actually enter the city by crossing the spectacular Roman bridge, which is in the slide on the left, and you make your way to the cathedral. And to me, it is one of the most amazing edifices that you will ever see. When the Christians reconquered Cordoba from the Muslims, they didn't destroy the mosque, which is the photograph that you see on the right. They actually built their cathedral inside the mosque. So the cathedral literally is in the middle of the mosque. You then do a walking tour of the city and there's leisure time for lunch and more sightseeing before you head back to the hotel. It's a, it's a wonderful excursion. Next slide, please. The El Farniejo optional tour is affectionately called Lunch with the Ladies. It takes place in a small village where you have the opportunity to have lunch in someone's home. And it's one of my favorite tours. En route, you stop in a small village for churros and chocolate from a local street vendor, as you can see in the picture on the left. And then you go <clears throat> to an olive oil factory where you actually see how they produce that bottle of olive oil that you probably have in your kitchen. It's important to note, and I'm sure you didn't probably know this, that Spain is the largest producer of olive oil in the world. It actually produces 69% of the world's output. Now, most people would say Italy is, but Italy and, both, and Greece are both way down the list. When you get to the village, you're divided into groups of about eight to 10, and you make your way to one of the host's homes, and you have a lunch and lots of wine. When you, the plate that you see at the top right is cold cuts and cheese. That's the first plate that arrives on the table and with bread, and most people are starving. So they proceed to eat the whole thing, but they forget that then there's a soup course, then there's a meat and potato course, and then there's a dessert course. And the locals often serve um, their homemade liqueurs with the dessert course. It is fantastic. And most people sleep on their way back to the hotel in the coach. Next slide, please. Whether you're thinking of joining a two week, three week or four week tour, you might be wondering what are the kinds of activities there are to do on your days at leisure, especially for the three and four week tours. In fact, there are so many things to do that you will never be bored. And I'm only able to mention a few. One is a visit to Paloma Park, which is in walking distance of the hotel. And it is considered one of the most beautiful parks in the Costa del Sol. There is an artificial lake in the middle, and there are lots of ducks and peacocks, as well as a cactus garden that has over 450 types of cacti. It provides a quiet oasis that you can bring your book and sit on a bench and just have a wonderful, wonderful morning or afternoon. And just outside the city of Tormalino, the botanical gardens are amazing. They are set on 40,000 square acres, the site of an old mill where they actually made bread. There are more than a thousand plant species including over 150 varieties of palm. Who knew there were that many palms? I mean, I remember I was running around, every time I go there, like with the camera, just clicking all these palms. And then of course I have to take the little notes about where they come from, because I know I'll never remember. And if you finish that, there are 300 trees and there are 450 different kinds of shrubs. There are great walking paths throughout, 
There's also a Japanese garden and it's an easy trip by taxi. Um, I should note that lots of times what happens is when people say, oh yeah, let's go to the botanical garden, people on the tour, um, they share a taxi. So it's not expensive to do any of these things. Toro Molinos is literally one of the places I take my groups to on our first day at leisure. It's walking distance from the hotel, but if you don't wanna walk, there is a, a bus that stops literally right in front of the hotel and it runs every half hour. And you should note that Toro Molinos also has a market, if you love markets, every Thursday. The main shopping street is called the Calle, Calle San Miguel and it's always busy. Tons of stores and they buy things, cafes to have coffees at, or just to sit and watch the world go by. There is also the Casa de las Navajas, which is the house that's at the very bottom on the right. And that was a mansion that was built by a sugar baron um, in 1925 as his summer residence. It's a wonderful place to visit. Next slide, please. If you love horses, the El Rancho, uh, the El Ranchito, sorry, horse show is for you. It is performed every Wednesday night and it brings together some of Andalusia's best riders and horses. It includes equestrian ballet, Spanish dressage, and other performances that really demonstrate the incredible skills of these horse men and women. It lasts for about an hour, an hour and a half, and they pick us up at the hotel and they bring us back to the hotel. Yes, there is flamenco shows at our hotel, but they are nothing like attending a real flamenco performance in a traditional venue. The flamenco show on Toro Molinos features 10 performers, six dancers, two guitarists, and two singers. It lasts for about two hours, including an intermission, and we take taxis in both directions. It's great fun. Next slide, please. Who would have guessed that there would be a Buddha stupa in the Costa del Sol? I remember the first tour that I ever did and we're driving along the highway and I look up at the mountain and I see the stupa and I think, what is that? Well, it's the Enlightenment stupa in Benalmadena and it's the largest stupa in Europe. It gives off a great sense of peace and quiet. And if you're there and you walk around it clockwise three times, you get good luck. Everybody walks around it three times. And you also see a magnificent view of the coast. It's easily accessible by local bus. And then from the stupa, you can walk to Benal Madena Pueblo. It takes about 10 minutes. Um, and when you get to the bottom of the hill, if you don't want to walk up, these people put in an elevator. And, you know, I mean, who can really avoid walking to a beautiful um, small white village? You can never tire of them. Um, there's more small cobblestone streets and a beautiful, lovely fountain like in the image on the right. And it's really hard to believe this was the original town of Betel Madena. When you're at the hotel and you look to the, look to the right past the marina, that's all in Betel Madena on the coast. And there's hundreds of hotels and condos. So the peace and quiet of the original village is very, very different. Next slide, please. The food of the Costa del Sol is wonderful. Of course, you must try paella. It's delicious. And if you like fish, there is every kind of fish imaginable. My all-time favorite is bucarones, which are deep fried anchovies. Now don't say, oh my goodness, that sounds horrible. They are wonderful. They're like popping French fries into your mouth. Um, there are also all kinds of um, uh, cheeses and olives and there's Iberian ham and there's tortas, which are like omelets. And wait till you try the fried salted almonds. You can buy them in Canada, but they cost an absolute fortune. For a little teeny bag like this, they cost about $5. So I always suggest to people, bring it back, divide it into little pouches and give it to your friends. They will love you. And they're addictive, let me tell you. Um, as you walk along the promenade, you'll sometimes see restaurants cooking fish on a skewer over a pit of coal. That is called an espestos, which means skewers. It's a method of cooking that the fishermen used to use in their boats and which is why you'll often see them being cooked in small boats on the outside of restaurants. It's really neat. Next slide, please. One of the most important aspects of a stay put is the hotel. And this one is fabulous. Previously, it was a condominium building before being converted into a hotel. The location is great. 
It is right on the marina and it's on the promenade, encouraging you to walk forever. Yes, you can get in those 10,000 steps every day. And all our meals are included as well as wine and beer at lunch and dinner. The food is delicious and it is hard to resist going back for seconds and thirds. And who's counting how many times you go to the dessert table? The rooms are all very spacious because it was a condo. And there is a bedroom, a small sitting room, a lovely bathroom, and a fridge. There are laundry facilities in the apartment hotel next door, and there are easy access to local buses. It's about a 10 minute walk up to the main traffic street where the buses go when you go east to Malaga and you go west to Mijas and the Stupa and all of those places. Depending on what time of the year you actually travel, you may get another hotel, but it has all the same amenities and it's also part of the Malia chain. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, the hotel is on the promenade, which is lined with shops and cafes and restaurants. And it's magical to walk along and to see the unbelievable sand sculptures that people built. You can see the sand castle at the top left. I mean, they do things like, uh, you know, there's one that was the Godfather. There's a couple that like the band of Queen, uh, a big, huge rhinoceros, et cetera. Well, I was always curious, you know, what happens when it rains? So one time I was there when it rained overnight a little bit and I went down that morning to see and they were all there busy rebuilding the sculptures and by that late afternoon, they were all back to normal. And as you walk along and you get tired, you can always sit down and you can have a coffee and a cafe, a beer, a tapas. Um, and there's so much to see and do that you are never gonna be bored. And if you don't wanna do anything, you can do that too. You can just lie in a lounge chair out by the pool and uh, read a book. So next slide, please. The weather. Everyone always asks about the weather. The average temperature in the spring is between 12 and 14 degrees and the high average is 17. Obviously, it's cooler in January and the warmest at the end of March, early April. If you go in October, the average temperature is 22. Some mornings at both times, it's a little chilly, but it quickly warms up and just being there brings a smile to your face. I love this tour. And the Costa del Sol is a wonderful respite from our challenging winters. Nos vemos on the Costa del Sol. Hasta pronto. See you there. Thank you so much, Barbara, for that incredible presentation. What a beautiful place. It is gorgeous. Just to let everyone know, we offer two, three, and four week departures to the Costa del Sol in the winter, fall, and holiday season. The next offering of this tour will be in December of 2021, this year, for the holiday season, and we have many departures throughout the winter months as well. Please watch our website or the brochure for, future de for further details on this tour. We are now moving on to our question and answer period. If you have a question, please enter it into the Q&A box and I will pass it on to Barbara. Thank you again, Barbara, for that amazing presentation. Definitely stunning place and your pictures are fabulous. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, we have had some questions come in and um, you mentioned some beautiful optional excursions that can be booked when you're there. Um, what would you say is the approximate cost of the, these excursions, especially Seville and Ronda? Well, um, they vary in price. And I think it's, you know, I, the last time I was there was right before the COVID lockdown in um, February of 2020. So I don't really want to venture. I mean, it's, it's probably somewhere around um, 45, 50 euros, but the price has probably changed between then and now. Sure. But that's around what it was then. Yeah. So that gives mm -hmm. us a good idea. Awesome. And this is in, in euros? Yes, in euros. Mm -hmm. And to pay for them, can they be paid in cash or credit card? Or how, how do we go about that? Well, the optional excursions are organized through our um, tour operator in um, Spain, in, Mal in Malaga. And um, they come and they talk about the tours. And then they take either a credit card or they'll take cash. But I think the majority of people actually pay with their credit card. OK, but it's good to have the option anyway. Yeah. And to bring, uh, do you recommend that we bring euros in advance from home or is it uh, easy to get them in Spain? Well, it's easy to get them, but I, I suggest that people do bring some euros. So they have some at the very beginning. 
and um, and don't bring you know it's I, I encourage people not to bring Canadian dollars because it's much more complicated to change. A lot of banks don't even have exchange facilities anymore. But oh. a bank card or a credit card, particularly a bank card, there's ATMs everywhere um, in terms of getting money. And I mean, you can, but euros are really the currency of, in use. Okay, good to know. And um, we also had another question come in regarding, uh, because your pictures are just stunning and the flowers are so beautiful. And uh, someone in the audience asked if, uh, if there are as many flowers in bloom in December, do you know? Um, the actually the only time of the year I haven't been there is in December, but I would say that I have been there at the end of January, early February, and there actually are a lot of flowers that are in bloom then too. So I would assume that um, there are some that are in bloom in December. Excellent. Uh, one more question that's coming in, uh, because again, you're making us hungry too with all those <laughs> pictures of food. Um, what edible items should everyone buy that you recommend to bring the almonds? Uh, bring back to Canada? Um, it just says recommend. So either to bring back or to, to, to buy there that you should be having when you're there <laughs> yes there's to so, bring back to Canada <laughs> there are so many things well olive oil for one I mean obviously there's lots of great olive oil to buy you can actually buy it at the olive oil factory but if you go on that optional excursion that we visit and you can taste it because they put out bread and olive oil so you can actually taste what it tastes like and it's very inexpensive at buying it at the factory um, but olive oil is one um, they also um you know, have um, those almonds you can buy. They also do all kinds of things with figs. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's and all kinds of liqueurs and specialties like that. And olives, there's every kind of olive you could ever imagine. Um, and when you go to the market, you'll see there's like 25 different kinds of almonds and 25 different kinds of olives. <laughs> and olive oil. <laughs> and olive oil. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. And you also had some beautiful photos of, of the promenade that's right nearby the hotel. Um, how long is that boardwalk? Well, the, the promenade is about 20 kilometers long. So oh. I've only had I've only had two people who have ever walked the whole distance, um, but they took a taxi back. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Excellent. And it's, it's fairly safe to walk around on your own? Yes, it is very safe to walk around on your own. I tell everybody that the wisest thing to do is to leave your passport and most of your money and your credit cards, unless you need them, in a safety deposit box in your room and take what you need for what you're going to do that day. Um, and you might take a credit card and some cash, but you know, you never know. You, I mean, I have never had any problems with any of the groups that I've taken to the Costa del Sol. But you really, you, you just want to be preventive and not to ensure that doesn't happen. Absolutely. That makes sense. And when you're out and about, let's say we're doing the 20 kilometer walk. Um, if you need to use the washroom, are, do you need to pay for public washrooms or, or are they free? Um, no, they're free. Um, some of them, some of them, I shouldn't say that. Some of them require um, 50 cents, like okay. 50 cents out of a euro. Um, and some of them, you know, you open the door and let everybody in. So it's depending if you're on doing that particular walk, then there are, there are not public toilets, but you can go into a restaurant or you can go into a hotel and use their washrooms, um, in the way, but in some of the, some of the towns that we go to, they, you do. So I always encourage everybody to have small coins, like 50 cent pieces, um, or, um, euros mm -hmm. and, um, um, for when they want to use the washroom. Sounds good. And uh, on this walk, well, we're right on the beach. Um, are there chairs available to the hotel guests to sit by the beach? Well, for the tours that are in the early spring, or I said end of winter, the beach chairs are not out on the beach because um, they, for Spaniards, it's too cold. <laughs> I mean, for us, it's not cold. They, they think seven. They think seventeen degrees is too cold. Anyway. <laughs> So, so they're not out, but what, as, as it gets warmer, or if we have a number of days that are warm, um, even 17 degrees, 16 degrees, um, there are, there are chairs that are put out at restaurants, because there are some of the restaurants that are actually on the beach themselves. So they put out chairs and little uh, cabanas that you can have. Now you obviously have to eat there 
and you have to, you know, drink there or pay something to use it. But you can go and use it all day if you'd like to do it. And, um, you know, people do that. If they're really bound and determined, they're going to lie on a beach chair while they're there, they do. Um, I was also going to say, too, that the beach is beautiful and you can walk along it and there's lots of seashells to pick up. I mean, it's, it's really spectacular. Lovely. And uh, the pools at the hotel, uh, as you mentioned, the temperature is not as hot as it can get here in the summer, uh, in, in the winter months. And so is the pool open? Is it warm enough to swim in, in February, like January, February, March? Um, at the beginning of the tours, at the beginning of February, um, in January, it is not warm enough to swim in, the big pool. But as the, as the um, heat increases as we go along, like by, I would say by, you know, later on in February, second week, third week of February, the small pool, they'll often open up. Now it's chilly, you know. <laughs> not for <laughs> us. <laughs> not for me. But uh, I mean, there are people that say, oh, no, I'm bound to determine I'm going to go swimming and they go swimming. So, <laughs> sure. um, I mean, it is there. But I, I know that for the October tour, for example, it will be really warm um, and the later, like, it, yeah, uh, you know, I don't want to promise anything. I don't want, I don't want someone to say, well, Barbara told me the pool is going to be warm and it's <laughs> freezing cold. So it depends on your level of, you know, um, comfort and how hot it is. Tolerance, that day. tolerance, tolerance. Yeah, tolerance. <laughs> Sounds great, Barbara. And you also mentioned lots of beautiful restaurants around the hotel and our meals are included. But if you wanted a break to go for lunch at one of those restaurants, what would you say is the average cost of the lunch? Well, I think it obviously depends on the restaurant. Um, there's all kinds of restaurants. I mean, there are Mexican restaurants and Chinese restaurants and Japanese restaurants and pizza places and um, little homemade um, I mean, I shouldn't say little, but homemade restaurants um, by some Spaniards right behind our hotel. So I think you could eat for under 10 euros for a lunch. Um, and if you want to have maybe a beer, you might spend 12 euros. But you can go to a place and have a tapa, have two or three tapas and a, thing, a bottle of beer, and it'll be under $10. Um, and, you know, if you want to have a more elaborate lunch, there's some seafood restaurants, for example, that are, are much more expensive, but they're really, really good if that's what your goal is in terms of eating. Excellent. And uh, we all know about siesta time in Spain. When we're making plans to go for lunch, should we be mindful of this time? Are the restaurants open or the shops? The restaurants are all open. They would never <laughs> close for siesta because all the Spaniards <laughs> eat at the same time. But the shops are closed. Um, in Tormelinos, for example, they close from about 1.30, 2 o'clock till 3.30 or, I mean, 4.30 or 5 o'clock. Now, um, along the beach and along the promenade, all of those shops are aimed at tourists. So they're all open all the time. They don't close for siesta. Okay, that's great. <laughs> and when you're out and about on your own, um, is to communicate with the locals, is English spoken widely? Everybody speaks some English. I mean, it, it really, I can't think of anybody on an that we interact with on an ongoing basis that doesn't speak some English. It's very, very easy for people to communicate. Lovely. That's great. And I also wanted to ask you about the local entertainment and the entertainment at the hotel. You sh showed us the flamenco shows and you mentioned that there is uh, nightly entertainment at the hotel. Uh, do they have every night a show or how does that work? Absolutely. Every night they have a show um, and they have a whole variety of shows. They do a flamenco show, but they have different kinds of music. They have some rock and roll. They have a big, they have a dance floor. So um, I've had, you know, lots of people on various tours who couples who love to dance and you don't need to be a couple. Anybody can dance and um, just move with the music. So it, they all start about 930 at night. And um, they run about an hour, maybe a little bit longer. So um, you're, you're never, you're never going to be bored. Awesome. And very important last question here. Is there a happy hour at the hotel? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a happy hour at the hotel. It's from six to seven. You get two drinks for the price of one. <laughs> and um, it's, it's perfectly timed because the restaurant doesn't open till seven o'clock. And, you know, you have to remember when you're in Spain, most people eat a lot later than we do. So for the Spanish opening the restaurant at 
seven o'clock is really early, but they open at seven o'clock so you can enjoy happy hour and then proceed to the restaurant. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Barbara, for such an informative presentation. I, I can see why you love it there so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I really do. I love it very much. Anyway, thanks, Natalia. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Same. Thanks so much. We are now entering the last 10 minutes of our webinar. Please feel free to continue to use the Q&A box to send us any questions you have. Don't miss out on our next exciting webinar taking place on September 28th, featuring Costa Rica Yoga Retreat with local expert Martin Raset Vindas. Be sure to subscribe to our e-newsletter on our website to receive a free Zoom invite directly in your inbox. Stay tuned for details regarding upcoming webinars on our social media. If you would like to learn more about Senior Discovery Tours, please stay with us as I will be providing more details about our tour types and inclusions, plus everything that makes traveling with us so exceptional. We like to take care of all the details, both big and small. Just a few of the things we include on all our tours, round trip transportation between your home and the airport in most Canadian cities, all airfare and airport taxes, carefully selected accommodation, most meals, all tipping and taxes, cancellation insurance, health insurance while outside Canada. The best part is that all our tours are guaranteed in Canadian funds with all taxes included and no hidden fees. To further enhance your tour experience, we provide meet and greet service at Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa and Vancouver airports to help assist with your checking experience. Tours fully escorted by one of our experienced tour managers. Expert local guides providing knowledgeable commentary on the history, culture, and customs of the destination you're visiting, as well as entry visas to those countries where it is required. Our optional services allow you to curate your own travel experience. We offer air extensions should you wish to stay longer in the country you're visiting, air upgrades to assist with the comfort of your flying experience, waiting lists for those tours that are sold out as well as the roommate matching program. Now on to some of our incredible tours and what they offer. We have flight plus coach tours. These tours ensure you get the most out of your holiday. There are multi-city tours, which means more hotel changes and lots of movement, ensuring tons of excitement. Listed here are some of our more popular flight and coach tours. Just like the term suggests, these tours are best suited for those that enjoy staying in one location and exploring its surroundings. These tours are much more leisurely, allowing for time to relax and to also enjoy excursions. Here are just a few examples. Next, we have two and three center holidays. Focusing on two or three different regions or countries, these tours are excellent if you want to combine a couple of locations but still have plenty of time to explore. Listed are some of our most popular two and three center holidays. Another vacation type is our classical coach tour. These tours are perfect for those who do not get to travel abroad and wish to have an experience closer to home. Adventurous travelers who enjoy moving around while taking in incredible scenery love our walking and hiking tours. Imagine yourself walking through quaint French villages along coastal paths or by magnificent lakes while listening to the expert commentary of your local guide. Truly a wonderful way to travel. Our rail tours are becoming increasingly popular, offering a completely different perspective and unique way of traveling. It's easy to see why. From the Jacobite to the Glacier Express and to the Rocky Mountaineer, there is no shortage of unforgettable scenery on any of these tours. For those wanting more out of their travel experience, think about our exotic destinations. They will be full of adventure and never-ending opportunities for discovery. These tours are sure to delight anyone ready for an exciting journey. And lastly, there's no need to pack and unpack several times to get the most out of your tour. You will have access to hundreds of activities and amenities, not to mention incredible views. Senior Discovery Tours now offers 30 different cruises in locations all over the world. Here are some of our more popular cruises.
now the time has come once again to ask a question for your chance to win a $100 future travel gift certificate with Senior Discovery Tours. The first person to place the correct answer in the Q&A box will be the lucky winner. And the question is, who is buried in the Seville Cathedral? We will now give you a few moments to enter your answer in the Q&A box. Once again, the question is, who is buried in the Seville Cathedral? We want to thank all our loyal customers who have been posting such wonderful reviews on our social media over the past year. Please continue to let us know about your past travels and memories with Senior Discovery Tours and send us any suggestions you have for future webinars. You can follow us on all social media platforms. These addresses can be found on our website. We would like to extend our appreciation to all of you for joining us today. We hope to see you again soon. Have a great afternoon. Ciao.